Hello, Mark from Walter's World. Hey there, fellow travelers. <laughs> Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're gonna talk about being connected while you travel. And so today we're gonna focus on our three different ways that people can stay connected when they travel. Because I know when we go on vacation, yes, I'm here in Crete, and I think, oh, I wanna be in Crete and just kick back, relax, and not worry about the real world. But you know what? I do have a job back home I gotta keep in contact with. Of course, the grandparents wanna see pictures of the kids snorkeling, you know, these kind of things. And so you gotta be connected when you do go abroad. And so what I wanna do is go through kind of these three main ways I see how people can stay connected when they do travel. And I've used all these in different ways so I can give you, you know, first-hand knowledge on those. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is actually your mobile phone. Look, if you're gonna take your phone with you anyway, get an international data package. Look, some carriers contains an international data package when you go there, so you can go online, make phone calls, text, check emails, use GPS, all these things. But the thing is, not every carrier gives it to you for free. And so what you need to do is call up your carrier and say, hey, look, I'm going to Greece for two weeks what package should I get? Or do you have international data? And so what you'll do is you'll get maybe a set limit, you know, like with AT&T, they had various options where it was like, oh, for 30 bucks, you get, you know, 180 megs. And for 60 bucks, you get, you know, 300 megs and then free and, you know, and, and minute phone call, a dollar a minute phone calls and free texting. But for $120, you got 600 or you might have on a daily rate, like I have an international daily plan, so I pay 10 bucks a day. I get all my data for I have at home, which has worked well for me. And so you might look at that and how it's out there. But the thing is, is when you're looking at using your phone, it really depends on your carrier that you have. Because one thing is, if you think, oh, I got my iPhone 7 Plus here, I'll just put a new chip in when I get here. Yes, that is an option. You can buy SIM cards to put into your phone. However, if you got your phone from an AT&T or a T-Mobile or something like that, they might have your phone locked, so only AT&T or only T-Mobile works there, and so that can be a problem. So you would need an unlocked phone in order to get that SIM card. Now the thing is, the SIM card, when you go abroad, if it's unlocked, you can go to like a kiosk and go pick one up, sometimes for like five bucks. I mean, that's what's really cool. The problem with getting the SIM card when you go abroad is, reloading it you're gonna to have to go to a kiosk to reload some places you have to go to a bank to do it and if you don't have a local bank account it won't let you top up so that can be an issue so if you're going to be looking for that sim card make sure it's one you can top up online so you can just put your credit card information in have it sign like have it load up that way and you'll be okay for me i'll be honest with you having the, the data plan and things like that that is my most recommended one the one that i always do and the big thing is it for, is for safety if i need to make a phone Phone call okay yes emergency numbers work all the time but if I need to make a phone call to a hotel or if I'm lost or, or I need GPS to find a place things like that having that data on my phone it's right there I know how my phone works I have everything downloaded on it the phone numbers are on there it's all right there and that's why it makes it so easy but the thing is there are negatives to it there's reasons why people go for other things and the biggest reason is probably expense if you're getting these data package it can cost a lot of money I mean I'm doing a ten dollar a day package I'm here for six weeks, okay? Six weeks times six times seven times 10. Holy moly, Mark, you're gonna be like in 400, 500 bucks. Yeah, I will be. But since I work online for a living, I kind of have to do that, okay? But that expense thing is gonna be a big one. Another thing that I kind of look as a downfall of the data package and use your phone is sometimes those packages have limits, like how much data you can use. So it might be that you only get 600 megs. Well, 600 megs, that's not a lot of stuff you can do. I mean, for basic things, yes, but you're not watching any videos to calm down the kids when they get stung by jellyfish take my word for it it happened to us yesterday okay so you do want to be careful with that and another thing is not every phone will work abroad depending on your carrier if you have a major carrier it'll probably work wherever you go but the thing is if you have a regional carrier you know sometimes their phones don't work abroad and so you're kind of out of luck all right now if your phone is locked and you can't get a chip into there for that sim card one thing you could do they actually do sell the phone so you can buy the phone with the chip so you have that and that can be an easy thing and i do recommend that if you're going to be staying in one country and it's going to be all working there like you're going to spend a month in greece or a month in italy get the phone with the chip in there because you get a lot better rates for phone calls and data and things like that than back home 
phone. But the thing is, not every phone will work when you are here, not just for your server, but also the technology might not link up, so that can be an issue. The second thing we're gonna talk about is syncing up to Wi-Fi. So I have my old Galaxy S5 here that I gave to my son so he could play games and watch movies when we have Wi-Fi. And so our second option is, let's go for a Wi-Fi only connection. Now this one is good because, hey look, I'm, pay I'm not paying for anything. I got my phone set on AirPlay mode with Wi-Fi on. I got restaurants, they have Wi-Fi. I've got hotels, they have Wi-Fi. Museums have Wi-Fi. Sometimes cities have free Wi-Fi. So that's cool because it saves you in cost. And you can keep your same device so you can have your stuff on there, whether your maps or your contacts, all those things on there. So you'll all have all that with you. So it could be your phone from home. You just put in airplane mode and turn on the wireless setting and you're okay. And the thing is, like I said, there's tons and tons of cafes and hotels and restaurants and stuff that have Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, but the thing is, Wi-Fi is not a God-given right around the world. I've met a lot of tourists that were really upset when they couldn't get Wi-Fi or fast Wi-Fi or fast enough Wi-Fi. Look, one of the downfalls of just going for the free Wi-Fi version of things, just using your tablet or, or your phone as a kind of a mini tablet, is the fact that not everywhere has Wi-Fi. And not everyone has good Wi-Fi either. So you might want to, oh, I want to gram this up. Oh, no, you can't because the server's too slow. All right, so you want to be careful with that. Also, for me, one of the biggest issues I have with just going Wi-Fi only is safety. I've taken a number of groups traveling around the world from the university I teach at. And one of the things is I had students that are going to go, we're just going to do Wi-Fi and that's it. The problem was is when I needed to call them, I can't get in contact with them. They got lost and they wanted to get in touch with somebody. They couldn't find a place. It was late night. The restaurants are closed. The cafes were closed and the hotels are like, you're not staying here. You can't be here. And now they're out of luck. So you really got to be careful because that Wi-Fi only stuff can be a safety issue. Now, the thing is, is it can work pretty well. So what you might do is just get like the cheapest data package they have for like emergency moments, but then only use, just use Wi-Fi, you know, free Wi-Fi when you can. So there are those things. Now, and the thing is, is this Wi-Fi only stuff really works when you have kids. Cause look, for me, it's, or for us, I should say, it's worked well because, hey, look guys, there's no Wi-Fi at the beach. There's no, you know, there's no Wi-Fi at this restaurant. <laughs> And the kids focus on enjoying the sights and all these kind of things. And when they get back home, we want them to decompress and relax. And maybe Joss and I want to have a drink, you know, on the on the balcony looking at the beautiful, beautiful sea here. We say, hey guys, we have Wi-Fi here. Turn on, watch a movie, and check out. And that's kind of cool as well. And my last way I want to talk about being connected when you are traveling is getting a wireless device. Now I have this tap wireless device and basically anywhere I go I can get Wi-Fi with it. Uh, these wireless devices, there's a lot of companies that are on there. Tap was nice enough to send me one to try out. Basically what it is, is this connects to the cell phone coverage wherever you are. So wherever you go, if there's cell phone coverage and they have 3G or 4G or LTE or whatever you call the internet servers online, it will get that. That's what's cool about this thing. I don't have to have data packages. I don't have to have any of these things. It's all right here. This one cost me about 10 bucks a day to use. Um, and it gives, you know, you get your data on there. Now the thing is with these uh, wireless adapters like this, what's cool is you can attach multiple devices. Mine can sync up with up to five devices. So when we're at the hotel and you know we're in an apartment and you know, there's not a lot of good internet or there's not internet, well, I can get mine on there. My wife's on there. My son who's got his, you know, his phone and then my youngest my six-year-old he can put on the iPad and watch movies that way and it all connects up and it's all right there and it, wherever we go now the downfall this one is wherever there's not a signal for your phone there's not gonna be a signal for this device so if you're going someplace that's in the middle of nowhere and they only have like 2g service or GPRS two and a half G service so you can only make phone calls and text you will not get Wi-Fi with that okay so it has to be where you know there is a signal because you're kind of dependent on that with these devices now having said that it has been great because I know we were at a place and, and the Wi-Fi in the hotel wasn't very good, but we were in Sweden and it hooked up to the Swedish network. And man, the Swedish network was fast. So Caleb was watching YouTube, Liam was watching Netflix, and I was uploading a video all at the same time. So that can be really great. Another thing that's helpful with these wireless devices is some hotels only give you like one or two kind of entries into their wireless network because they're trying to save money and, and you know you're like dude i paid 200 bucks for this room why do i have to pay for your wi-fi why do i why do i only get two servers why do we get two connections 
This way, everybody, well, everybody up to five people can get wireless or Wi-Fi, which is really nice. Now, the downside of this one is it can be pricey. I've got a cheaper package, it's about 10 bucks a day. Some of them have limits on the number of much, how much data you can use. Also might be limited on the countries you go to. So if you're gonna be using one of these, make sure you tell them all the countries you're gonna go to and when you're gonna be there so it all syncs up. So they make sure that, oh, it doesn't work in Russia or it does work in Russia or it does work in Greece. You have that all set up. Another downfall of this one is if you're using it and you've got a data package, turn off your international roaming while you use this because what happened to us on ours is we were in Russia and the device died. Battery died and all of a sudden I was switched over to my, my data package. Russia was a different system so it cost us a bit of money. So you do want to have a heads up with that one because these devices do so much. They burn through their batteries relatively quickly, I feel. So you want to keep a heads up on that one. So when you're out and about and you don't need it, just turn it off, turn it back on when you need it, and you'll be fine. And I guess our last little way you could connect is not connect. Look, you're on vacation. You're here to enjoy and unplug and try to do that. But I realize that that is not always an option. So do, I hope you can stay connected to let your family know how much fun you're having when you're abroad and all these kind of things. So I hope that helps you get an idea of how to stay connected when you do travel. I will say one thing, if you're thinking you're gonna go to internet cafes when you do travel and just do things that way, they are not as popular as they were even five years ago, let alone 10 or 15 years ago. So you probably will need a device, but for, you know, worst case scenarios hotels nice hotels will sometimes have business offices and business rooms you can go to to use their wireless maybe for free maybe for for not they have a computer there just so you know okay anyway I hope this helped you stay connected while you travel if you want to learn more about traveling why don't you click that subscribe button we put out new travel videos every Wednesday and Saturday and we really try to help travelers just like you travel better so if you want to get in contact with us we're here on YouTube Twitter Facebook Instagram it's all Walter's World, so it makes it easy for you. Now we have a great time traveling wherever you are, and I'll say bye from Crete. Stay connected. See, they go on Wi Fi. You can watch our videos while you're traveling. Oh, what a great combination! <laughs> bye.